Uh, alternation in the blood, line, and liver metabolism of dairy cows throughout the transition periods. Okay. okay. <laughs> Let's Good start. afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Dear Chairman, thank you very much for the nice introduction. Well, I feel very honored to be able to present to you today the first um, pre or preliminary data for a large project that we are currently conducting at the Clinic for Cattle in Leipzig. And as I just realized, really lines up nicely with my two previous speakers, which makes me very excited about the data, and we really have to get in touch later on. But <laughs> I'll start my presentation now. Um, well, as all of you know, dairy cows in our modern production systems are at a high risk to encounter metabolic disorders during the transition period. We also know that lipomobilization and the liver are, play a key role in this aspect, and if the, if the limit of the metabolic capacity of the liver is reached, a fatty liver syndrome might occur. However, reasons for individual differences in susceptibility and underlying pathomechanisms are still widely unknown. From a practical side, there is a large need in the, for the identification of additional prognostic markers, but also sound metaphylactic treatment protocols. So therefore, we have initiated a large project at the Clinic for Cattle in Leipzig with three main aims. First of all, the characterization of liver fat content and fractions of liver fat, the histopathological alterations in the liver, and metabolomic alterations in liver blood and urine in dairy cows throughout the transition period, and putting this data set in relation with clinical and production data. Second aim is to develop a non-invasive detection of liver fat content uh, by using ultrasonography. And the third aim was to um, uh, investigate the effect of a metaphylactic treatment with cyanocobalamin and potophosphan. For that, we are working with different academic institutions, as well national as international, and also various partners from the industry. Um, the, the core of this project forms a, tri a large trial involving 80 German Holstein dairy cows, which was performed on a, a larger dairy in Saxony, in which we followed up the cows from two weeks prepartum until six weeks postpartum. We had four different treatment group, it, groups, each containing 20 animals. Two groups received um, a treatment with butophosphan and cyanocobalamin, Three day, at three time points in the, in the week prior to calving and at three time points in the week post-calving with two different dosages, whereas two other groups just received the placebo. <clears throat> Throughout the trail, we had a very exact documentation of the clinical and production state of each animal. And regarding the samples, we collected at four times liver biopsies and performed liver ultrasound at seven times throughout the trail, trial. Blood samples and also urine samples were also collected at several time points throughout the trail. For the data that I would like to show you today about the metabolomics, um, we chose to, um, to investigate the time points two weeks prepartum, one week postpartum, and four weeks postpartum. Um, for the blood and liver samples, we, we performed an MS-based metabolomics analysis in which 180 different metabolites were investigated. For the urine samples, an MR-based technique was used um, analyzing 55 different metabolites. For, um, in first instance, we did a multivariate data analysis as also illustrated by my previous speaker. But for everybody new in the room, I'll just um, explain shortly how one has to read these kind of plots. Um, so each dot represents one sample. So we have 80 cows and three time points. Two weeks prepartum in green, one week postpartum in red, and four weeks postpartum in blue. And here I, we show the plasma and the urine data, and the closer two dots 
are to each other on a plot, the more similar the metabolome is of these two samples. And what we see right ahead is that the, um, the three different time points cluster nicely in the plasma and the urine samples, which is too expected, but very nice for us because it speaks for the internal valid validity of our sample labeling. Um, but when we look at the liver um, plots, we see a whole different picture. The prepartum samples in green, they cluster as well as on the other plots, but the postpartum samples form two district groups. One week postpartum, but also four weeks postpartum. And at first sight, we said, oh, nice, this looks like a treatment effect. But I have to disappoint you and also our colleagues from Bayer. <laughs> this is not a treatment effect. So um, we say, okay, we have to look deeper into the data, what this could be. And we found that we actually can create two subgroups. We call it subgroup one, all animals, where the metabolome doesn't change much from the prepartum state. They stay very close to their prepartum status, whereas the animals in subgroup two, at least by four weeks postpartum, move quite far away, so their metabolome has changed much more compared to group one. So what, what, what differentiates these two groups? So when looking in our data sheet, we realized, huh? that the animals in subgroup one have all calved between February and May throughout the trial. So the next step for us was to investigate, first of all, what, what is the, on a metabolomic level, what is the difference between the two groups, and then dig deeper on a clinical state, what was the difference between the animals. So what you see here is so-called contribution plots. Um, it shows the difference between the postpartum and prepartum states, stage in each, in each subgroup, um, and it indicates the metabolites that make the biggest difference or create this difference between the two states. And what one sees immediately is that the animals in subgroup one have um, only a few metabolites, I would say, upregulated or that can be found more in these samples compared to subgroup two, where a whole range of metabolites is, um, let's say, upregulated or um, more, um, can be found more in these samples. And when we looked at the metabolites, we said, okay, this has all to do with, with, um, with fatty acid metabolism. So maybe these are the cows that have a higher lipomobilization, that maybe are a more negative energy balance. So we took our clinical data, and, um, when, and what we saw was that the animals in subgroup one were the animals with a higher cardiovascular digestive system and reproductive reproductive disorder score and had a higher amount of treatment. So these were the animals that tended to be more sick compared to subgroup two. And also in the clinical chemistry, we saw that they had higher free fatty acid concentrations in the blood and the histopathology showed a higher fat storage and lower glycogen storage. When we looked in the herd milk, milk control data of the whole herd of all 600 cows, we saw that in that period where subgroup one has calved in, so between February and May, milk fat content was much higher in the, in the, all over the herd, indicating um, higher fat mobilization throughout this period in all over the herd, so a higher negative energy balance, maybe indicating some problems with the feeding, which we are now in investigating further. So our, um, our, um, <laughs> so we came away from the hypothesis saying this, this, this pattern might be an indication of a fatty liver and created a new hypothesis saying maybe this is an expression of an active and even more healthy metabolism and that the subgroup one had problems adapting to the new state being in lactation. But what about the treatment effect I was talking about at the beginning? As I said, we didn't see any treatment in the effect looking on broad scale. So our new hypothesis was, how about animals that are in a risk period? So we took subgroup one and created a, a model only with these animals 
and took days um, seven, so one week postpartum and four week postpartum, analyzed this data for a treatment effect. And what we saw there is that we could actually clearly differentiate the animals that had been treated with, um, with cyanocobalamin and butophosphant compared to the um, <clears throat> compared to subgroup uh, to the ones that hadn't been treatment. We also could validate our models, so these models you're seeing here are valid, and we're able to identify the metabolites that res are responsible for creating this difference between the animals, and which we are now um, further investigating. But what about plasma and neuron? I showed these two um, graphs in the beginning, and here you don't see these subgroups right ahead, and you also don't see the treatment effect. But knowing what we had to look for now, we started again digging deeper in the data, and we're actually able to create um, valid models differentiating subgroup one and two. So we were able to identify these groups also in the plasma, as well as in the urine data, which I won't be showing now due to sake of time. Um, then we also looked again in subgroup one, and at day 28 samples, we were also able to identify the treatment effect. In the urine samples, also at day seven. <clears throat> so as a summary, I can summarize that we saw a partum and a time effect in plasma, urine, and liver samples as to be expected. But actually, throughout the trail, we had two subgroups, of which one was a higher, at a higher negative energy balance, and what we call were animals at, in a risk period. We saw the treatment effect in subgroup one in liver, plasma, and urine samples. So the, uh, I'd like to show you where we are standing now with our research. I illustrated that we have the metabolomics data from urine, liver, and plasma, uh, that we are adding clinical chemistry, clinical scores, and histopathology. But now also the production data is slowly flowing in. And we are hoping to add to the ultrasound data, blood fatty acid metabolism, and haptoglobin data within the next few weeks and months. The next steps are therefore to dig deeper in the data, of course to further multivariate analysis, but also add some traditional statistics to put p-values on everything we see and also describe these met metabolomic alterations precisely and to bring this data in, uh, in relation with clinical production, pr production, other data, and of course, refining the treatment effect we are seeing to bring it on a production level. So I would like to thank everybody involved in this large trial, especially the doctoral students who have put a really lot of effort, who stayed at the farm throughout the whole year collecting this data. Um, and all the other colleagues involved, and of course also our colleagues from Bayer who have not only supported us financially, but also with the multivariate data analysis and their expertise, and I would like to thank you for your attention. <clears throat>